Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and this is the Tin Hi-Fi P1 Max. Yes, this is the latest I am from Tin Hi-Fi. It's coming in at around 180 bucks, but maybe more to the point. This is the latest in what's kind of been a string of these 14 point something millimeter planar magnetic driver I am. So you're probably by now well familiar with the 7 Hertz Timeless, came out about eight months ago, and that was from what I understand, and this is me, this is my conjecture, really. Uh, I think that was the introduction of a new OEM driver that a lot of manufacturers are trying out. So first was the seven Hertz timeless. Then a couple months later, there was the Litsure S12. And then a couple months after that, there was the wrapped go hook X. And now we've got the tin hi-fi P1 max and all of this, all this planar stuff kind of got me thinking, which one's the best. So, I've actually got all four of them on hand right now. And for the past couple of weeks, I've been listening to them and comparing them and trying to find the differences and really trying to find out which one do I think is the best because they're all frankly more similar than they are different, but they are different in a lot of ways. And that's what we'll talk about in this review of the P1 Max. Um, like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. So if you're watching now live, you have any questions about the P1 Max, the Rapco hook, the S12, the timeless, whatever, uh, leave it in the live chat at the end of the review. We'll have a little bit of a back and forth conversation and hopefully I can answer all of your questions. Um, but I guess with that out of the way, shout out to Hi-Fi Go for sending in the P1 Max for review. I do have a link to them in the description down below, but let's jump to the table and start talking about the physical stuff. We're, we're going to focus first on the P1 uh, and then we'll get into the comparisons. But here is the packaging for the P1 Max. Uh, interestingly, they call it the gi Giant Panda. I'm not totally sure why. I'm not gonna call it the Giant Panda, not that I have anything wrong with it. It's just, it's the P1 Max to me. Um, so there you go, there's the packaging, nice and simple. And honestly, what you get inside the package is a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit thin for uh, $180 IEM, but here's what you get, okay? You get a carrying pouch which if I'm being honest, is actually probably more useful than a lot of the, the larger cases you get with some IMs, but I don't know, it does feel a little bit, a little bit, we'll call it cheap uh, at the $180 price range, but there you go, you get that, but you do get a pretty substantial selection of ear tips and I'm not totally sure exactly why. Let me pull these in, you get, um, Tin hi is pretty signature, white or gray, uh, foam ear tips, which is cool. I think these, these look cool, but I never really use them because I'm not a big foam ear tip person. But interestingly, they also include two different sets of silicone ear tips, actually three different sets. There's two full sets of these and medium, large, medium, and small. And then there's also a large, medium, and small, or maybe just a large and a small on this style. I'm not totally sure what's supposed to be the difference, um, but to be honest, I'm not using either of them, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I ended up using a, a, an aftermarket set of ear tips, uh, and I'll tell you why in a bit, but that's, that's the selection there, which is, I guess, uh, definitely more than you would normally expect, but also somewhat confusing, if I'm honest. But nevertheless, that's going to lead us into talking about the IM itself. And we'll start with this cable, which is curiously, I feel like this is the same cable I've seen on a number of different uh, IMs recently. Let's see which ones are there. There was the, um, the, 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 the Let's Sure EJ07M Lava, kind of Lava Edition that comes with basically this exact same cable. There's another IM I just reviewed recently. Oh, it was the, uh, the Thea Audio. Uh, Elixir seems to come with almost this exact same cable. Now, the version here that we've got on the P1 Max, you see it's just got pretty basic two cable wind or two core wind. It is a little bit on the stiff and memory prone side, as you can probably see, it's reshaping itself into a coil, but for the most part, I don't know, it's a pretty decent cable. Um, no real complaints about it, but maybe a little bit on the stiff side. You do have you know, a nice compact Y split up here. And then you do also have a very functional chin cinch, which you know, I am a stickler for it. So uh, that was certainly nice to have. And then of course, up here at the top, you've got your two pin connectors um, and your preformed ear hooks. Nothing, nothing too surprising about that. So I don't know, decent cable. Uh, then that's gonna lead us into talking about the ear pieces here. Now this is where, um, this is kind of a departure, if I'm honest, from a lot of Tin Hi-Fi's other stuff. I don't really see this matching their other design language, but I gotta say, I think it looks pretty cool. It's got this fairly unique, uh, almost a honeycomb or like a chain link 
fence sort of design. If I rub my finger across it, I can kind of feel the design underneath of it. I'm not sure exactly how they make it, but um, it's not just like a two-dimensional print, I guess. I mean, it's mostly two-dimensional, but there's something underneath there. Um, but yeah, generally kind of cool looking. The, the rest of the shell is basically just, you know, a black plastic shell, not too fancy. Uh, but maybe what's most stand out about the, the build of this thing is just, it's a little bit on the large side, if I'm honest. And kind of this has been the trend with most of these planar IMs is that the ergonomics on them are not great. So I guess with that out of the way, let's jump to the fit demo and I'll show you how these things fit inside my ear. So it is a smidge on the large side, as you can see inside my ear, not overly large or anything like that, but more so it's just not really custom molded to uh, the inside of an ear. It's just like this big round bulbous shape. And because of that, you know, I feel I felt that I wasn't able to get the IM to sit as deep as I wanted it to inside my ear canal. And so that's actually why uh, I was mentioning, I've got some other tips on here. Um, what I'm using are Asla Sedna Ear Fit Lite. Um, I think that's the right, the right collection of words there. Um, but basically these ear tips just have, you know, like two millimeter longer reach on them. And that might not sound like a lot, but when it comes to the inside of an ear, an extra two millimeters of reach uh, does actually help with the fit security. So I would say uh, ergonomics on this thing. All right, let's say um, ingress, egress, it's it's easy. Like there's, there's no fuss getting them into the ear. Comfort is actually pretty good because they are all rounded and they're lightweight. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna feel them in your ear or anything like that, but it's in the fit security where these things are a little bit weak, but that's honestly kind of true of all the other ones. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. With these longer ear tips, fit security was about as good as, it, as I had with any of the other planars. So that's where we're at with the build stuff here on the P1 Max. But with that out of the way, let's now zoom in and start talking about the uh, the sound on these things. And I'll, I'll kind of go cover this briefly because mostly I want to make the sound talk comparisons with the other ones. But I will start with this one specifically and we'll just kind of describe the general sound signature. I would say on the P1 Max, it's kind of a, a mild V-shape like all the other ones. But on here, I would say this is a little bit on the warm side. So um, it's somewhat of a low contrast sound, honestly, for a V-shaped sound signature. So you still do get a mid bass emphasis and you stu still do have treble emphasis, but I feel like the, the sort of the macro contrast, the, um, the, the, the big dip in the mid range that you would get in a, in a traditional V-shaped sound signature is not here. This is a lower contrast V-shaped sound signature, which if you've heard a sound like that, you're probably already kind of imagining what that sounds like. But if not, we'll we'll, we'll get into more detail about that. Um, but yeah, that's the general sound signature. It's still got, you know, some bass emphasis. It's still got treble. Um, but I would kind of call this a, a warm, laid back version of that. So what do I like here on the P1 Max? Well, like all of the other 14 millimeter planars, a lot of the technical aspects on this thing are actually pretty good. So it's got very, very well extended treble. Um, and honestly, the treble here on the P1 Max is pretty safe as well. So that's not something I can say about all of the other planars. Uh, if you've seen my reviews of the Timeless and the S12, you know, I've given a couple of warnings about treble stuff. Honestly, the treble here is pretty, pretty tame. I didn't have any issues with it at all. I like that. And also like the other 14 millimeter planers, I think that this, the, the P1 Max does an excellent job of layering. Uh, gives you a pretty decent sense of depth. Um, and that, even though it's kind of like a low contrast sound, I feel like uh, uh, maybe a, as a byproduct of that extended treble or just how well the this driver handles the mid range, um, you do still get a nice sense of micro contrast, which makes it so that these things actually deal really well with busy music tracks. So an example I give a lot of the time is the Cure's Disintegration album. If you're not familiar with the album, check it out. Like even just the song called Close Down, try that one song. And it's just kind of like a lot of sounds in a lot of different places. Uh, and some headphones can, you know, get pretty overwhelmed with that and just kind of turn it into a blurred mess. The P1 Max actually does a pretty good job with that and does that pretty good job with other busy tracks like that. So. That's what I like here on the P1 Max. One of the things I don't like about it, there are some things. Uh, honestly, I think the bass on this one is kind of weak. It's a little bit soft, especially in the attack. Um, and 
I don't know, there's like a sense of like the, the base doesn't quite follow through. Maybe this is just me rationalizing the fact that um, if you look at the frequency response graph, the, the sub bass on this rolls off a little bit more heavily than it does on some of the other IMs. But I think that just kind of gives it a, a bit of a softer bass attack versus some of the others. Now there is still some physicality to the bass. It just doesn't really quite dig that deep or have that sense of follow through that you get on some other better bass IMs. Uh, and then that low contrast sound I was describing, generally that's a thing I like, uh, but it does, I guess it's it's low on a sense of clarity. So depending on your music, uh, if you're listening to, I don't wanna judge your music library, but if you're listening to music that's maybe not produced that well, uh, you want some of that bigger macro contrast in your sound signature to, to, to liven it up a little bit. And this I think requires, or just, it demands a little bit more of your music recording. So, it, um, I think that the micro contrast really does save it from sounding blurred and dull, but again, your music, your mileage may vary depending on the music that you're listening to. So those are my general thoughts here on the P1 Max, but like I mentioned up top, what I was really curious about is how does it compare with the other ones? So without further ado, let's move this pile of tips to the side. Hopefully I don't drop any on the floor. Move that box to the side. P1 Max, you're up here. Let's talk about some others. All right, here we've got the Wrapped Go Hook. Uh, this is another more recent of the planar offerings. Here we've got the Shure, the Let Shure S12. Uh, and I will caveat that this is the pre-production version. I have the production version as well, but that one's on loan. So most of these listening comparisons were with a pre-production version. And then we've, of course, got the 7 Hertz Timeless. And I've got this on a separate cable just because uh, this cable came, this one came with a 4.4 millimeter stock cable and I wanted to do head to heads very easily. And I didn't want to have to changing volumes for balance connector. So I've got this on another cable, but uh, that is your comparison. And this is what we're going to be talking about. Let's talk about price first. Um, P1 Max, as we talked about, 180 bucks, 14 point something millimeter planar magnetic driver. 7 Hertz Timeless, 220 bucks, 14 point something millimeter planar magnetic driver. We've got over here the Let's Shore S12. Uh, price on this is actually kind of varied. I think it was 150 bucks when it came out. Now I see it at about $170, but it's also got a 14 millimeter planar magnetic driver. And then up here, we've got the Wrapped Go Hook, which is the priciest of the bunch. It's 240 bucks. Also has a 14 point something millimeter planar magnetic driver, but it's also got, they say it's like, like a, a bone conductor in it. It's got a piezoelectric something driver in there. I can't confirm or deny that it's doing anything, but uh, there is ostensibly a, a second driver in this one. So this one maybe is the most different, at least in its driver configuration. Um, but let's talk about how they sound. What are, what are the differences in sort of the sound signature? And I will say up front, a couple of caveats. One, Honestly, most these these IMs are more similar than they are different. So as I'm describing the, the differences here, to some extent, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm picking at threads, but I don't know, there are some pretty noticeable differences that you can pick out. The other caveat that I want to give, however, is that I don't know if it's unique to this driver. I don't know if, if, if it's just a, a byproduct of the fact that a lot of people are measuring all these different IEMs, but I have noticed, and a number of people have noticed, fairly significant variance between units. So the frequency response that I have for my wrapped go hook might not be the same frequency response that other people have gotten. And same goes for any of these IEMs. There have been surprising amount of variance. So I've got fre my frequency responses measured and, and linked in the description down below. Check that out. What I think is interesting, and I'm just going to talk about this up front. If I compare my measurements to Crinicals, for example, my P1 Max, my S12, and my Timeless all look pretty close. Like they all look pretty, pretty similar. My Raptco hook, however, this Mine measures a little bit differently than his, and it's I'm, there's going to be some obvious differences between between our measuring rigs. That much I expect. Uh, but what's surprising is that I think that even beyond the differences in the measurement rigs, this one measures I would say noticeably different than Crinicals. And what's also worth talking about is that I've you know I noticed that difference, and I reached out and I tried to find out you know was there an intentional change in the production at some point. From what I understand, there was no intentional change at any point in the production, so it might be a little bit of a lottery, and that's not the best place to leave consumers, but I will leave you with that caveat up front. 
as we now go back to the table and now talk about the description of these as I hear them based on these units that are on the table. Okay, so the P1 Max, sound signature wise, I just got done describing it. Bit of a warm V of the bunch. I would say that the P1 Max is the most laid back, kind of the, the, the one with the least sense of micro contrast and the one with the kind of like the lowest contrast mid range. Um, that's just the, the, the tonality there, right? So a little bit warm uh, versus the others. The seven hertz timeless this is the one you're all familiar with. Uh, this is, you know, your classic mild V-shaped sound signature. Um, it's a bit mid bassy warm to some degree, but versus this one, you get more of that macro contrast, more of that difference between the upper mid range and the bass uh, with the, the lower mid range kind of a little bit more pulled back here. On the Let's Sure S12, uh, I would say it's pretty similar to this one. To the timeless it's also a mild v-shaped sound signature but what i would say different about this one is it's got a little bit of added brightness to it so uh, if you're kind of looking for like a range maybe i'll do the range in a little bit this one's got a little bit of extra brightness to it i'll just leave it there um, and similarly to the p1 or sorry to the the the, the timeless um, you got a stronger sense of macro contrast here and then here on the wrapped go hook honestly i think that this thing's tuning uh is basically almost identical to the timeless. So mild V-shaped sound signature, mid bassy warm, check, 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 more my macro contrast. So if I were kind of like laying these out, like I would put the timeless in, in the middle. This is kind of your baseline mild V-shaped sound signature. If you've got the, the S12 is a little bit on the bright side. You've got the P1 Max, it's a little bit on the warm side. And then my raft go hook at least, I would say is pretty, pretty similar to my timeless in terms of tonality. So there you go. That's how they compare in terms of sound signature, but how do they compare in terms of the technicalities, the fun stuff? There are differences here, which frankly I was kind of surprised by. So we'll start with the P1 Max, I would say, versus the bunch because of that difference in the macro contrast. I would say these have the least sense of clarity of the bunch. And partly that's also exacerbated by the bass attack being a little bit on the soft side, in, in my opinion. I did find that the treble in this was, you know, uh, probably the safest of the bunch as well. Well, this one's also pretty safe, uh, but you know, where these ones have a little bit of spiciness in the treble, a little bit of warning. Uh, this one I found actually pretty relaxing to, to, to listen to generally, not just because of that warm sound signature, but because the treble is tamer. Uh, but it still extends well and it still gives you a good sense of detail through the mid range. So technically, I really don't feel like this one's a step behind or anything except for in the bass. The bass is, is, is the weakest here of the bunch. Um, let's talk about the 7 Hertz Timeless. The bass attack on this one, I would describe also a little bit soft, but still firmer than the P1 Max. Um, I also found, and you might recall from my review, I found the, the Timeless to be a little bit sibilant for my ears. Uh, it just means that S sounds and stuff like that came across a little bit sharp and irritating, but for the most part, um, this is a pretty, pretty resolving set, maybe of the bunch. Interestingly, this one feels like it's the least resolving, um, the least sense of that micro contrast detail. And I don't know, again, is that you, is that just unit variants? Did I just get a timeless that's not as technical as the other ones? I don't know, but I mean, again, I'm splitting hairs here. Um, technical performance on that is still generally quite good. Uh, the S12, let's say uh, it's basically, you know, very, very similar to the Timeless, if I'm honest. There is a little bit of extra treble bite, which I think gives uh, the S12 a little bit of additional sense of clarity and sharpness in it. But interestingly, less issues with sibilance, again, at least for my ears. So, um, yeah, I would say technically performing. I actually like this one a little bit better than the Timeless, but they're basically within the same ballpark. And then finally, lead us into talking about the Raptigo hook, which interestingly, the first time I started listening to this, my thoughts were, oh, that's what people said the Timeless was because sound signature wise, it's very, very much a, a lot in common with the Timeless, but I felt like the technical performance here on the Raptigo hook did feel I want to say subtly better, but subtly better to the point that it, like this became kind of addicting to listen to. So just a stronger sense of uh, 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 incisiveness on the attack and the bass. Um, treble was a little bit smoother. I had you know no issues with sibilance here on the Raptigo hook, and just just generally found that this the the Raptigo hook had the best sense of incisiveness across sort of the attack on instruments. Right, so you got cymbal strikes, you got drum hits, and stuff like that. 
just all felt a little bit better defined here on, on the Hook X. Now, one thing that's different about the Hook X, I don't know that this is necessarily why, but this is uh, technically an open back IM. You can see that it's got uh, the grill is open here. And I know a lot of people have asked me about that. Maybe I'll talk about that. We're, we're talking now about a uh, form factor that was not the smoothest of transitions. But um, one thing I wanted to mention about this open back mix, it is real in that like, if I put my thumb over the back of this thing, it'll start to sound different. And tonally, it basically sounds the same, but it feels like the the sense of space and 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 and, and, and definition kind of goes away. And then it feels a little bit more mono. So the, the, the open backness is real, but I've had some people ask me about the, this thing being open back and like, does it leak sound because it's open back? And my honest opinion is no, not really. Uh, I would not worry about that at all, but you, you get about as much sound out of the back of this thing, actually less out of the back of this thing as your average I am, if it was just sitting on a table and it wasn't in your ear, right? So you got the sound coming out of the front of it. You can kind of hear it if you're not, if it's not inside your ear, but not really. And that's basically the same here for the P1 Max. But let's let's talk more about the form factor and how these things differ, okay? Uh, the P1 Max. Uh, aesthetically, look, you're, you're gonna make up your own mind about this. Uh, I would say aesthetic, it feels a little bit random uh, in my opinion, and it is the most plastic build. It's probably the cheapest feeling of the bunch. Um, fit security was, uh, a little weak, but honestly, fit security is kind of weak on all of these. Um, I don't know, it's pretty average, if I'm perfectly honest. The Timeless, uh, it does have a, an upgrade in terms of the, the build. These are metal shells, which is nice. I dislike the aesthetic on the Timeless even more though, if I'm perfectly honest. And the fit security on this, I found also pretty poor. So again, you're, you make up your own mind in, in terms of which one you think is the most attractive, but uh, this is not my look. I'll just say that. It is iconic. I'll give them that, but it's not my look. Um, the S12, uh, in my opinion, this is the nicest looking of the bunch. It's also, you know, it's kind of plain. It's just this silver metal blob, but I don't know. It's simple. It's to the point, utilitarian, and maybe that's what I... Maybe that's what I am. So uh, I like the S12 uh, aesthetically. Again, fit security, not the best. Um, you'll want to play around with, with tips and even cables, to be honest, because I think the aggressive bend of this hook right here is gonna, gonna clash with uh, some ears. It certainly clashed with mine. And I think a, a different cable would actually probably improve the fit a bit on the S12. And then that's gonna lead us into talking about the wrap go. I talked about the open backness, but what else we can say about this thing? Fit-wise, honestly, this is a lot like the others, or a lot like the P1 Max, I would say mostly. You can see it's kind of bulbous uh, on the inside. It's probably the largest of the bunch. Let's see, like versus the P1 Max. Yeah, they're kind of similar in shape and size, um, but it is an all metal shell. I think the aesthetics on the Rapco hook are not, they're not my, they're not my taste again. It kind of looks like a Razer gaming sort of style. It's got this green coloration. Um, would not be my first choice, but I don't know. It's pretty well built. Again, metal shells, which is nice. And then the hook is also the only one that comes with a cable that has uh, these hot swappable terminations. So you could turn this into a 4.4 millimeter balance cable should you choose. So I think that is kind of just about do it for how these IMs compare. But ostensibly, this is a review of the Tin Hi-Fi P1 Max, and I gotta give it a score. So out of five stars, right? Thinking about how this compares to the other ones, considering the price on this is not quite the lowest, but it's on the lower end. Uh, honestly, the P1 Max, I'm still gonna give it a solid four stars out of five. As I'm listening to it versus these others, you know, the bass is, I think, the weakest here on the P1 Max, but you know me, I'm not the biggest bass head anyway. So that didn't bother me too much. What I did like about this thing was uh, that somewhat kind of warm, laid back mid range. I like that. And then you get that good treble extension without any of the dangerous spice um, that kept it sounding nice and micro contrasty. Is this my favorite pick at 180 bucks? Probably not. I'd probably still go for something like the Moondrop Kato if I'm perfectly honest. But if you have your heart set on planar magnetic driver I am. I don't think this is the worst one of the bunch and you can certainly make up your mind based on how I describe them, which one works well for you. Uh, if I were to pick one of the bunch, it would probably be the Raptco hook. 
but it does cost quite a bit more. So that's my review here of the P1 Max. If you're interested in checking this out, I do have a link in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this review, this comparison helpful, you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell. YouTube will let you know next time I'm live, in which case, if it doesn't actually, join my Discord server. I've also got that linked below. Discord's better at alerting you to my live streams than YouTube is. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, uh, however you want to get your alerts, do it now. Uh, and if you're here live, hang out. We'll have a chat. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next Super Review. Cheers.